That's the V2 engine, as I pointed out, it uh, has a double wall, so the inner double wall is relatively thick for every thickness. That wall gets pretty hot, while these walls normally stay pretty close to the fuel temperature. But there the wall gets very hot, so the whole engine, due to the heat expansion, extends it, becomes about half an inch longer. And that's why you have to wrap all the lines around it, as you see there. And you see there again the turbo pump all the way on top. The brown pump is a fuel pump on this side. The turbine in the middle, uh, you can hardly see the LOX pump, but you see the uh, intake there for the hot gases to the turbine. That's really the white uh, insulated uh, pipe you see there. And on this en engine, we don't have the uh, hydrogen peroxide container, but you can see it on the redstone there, the brown container there. That's a hydrogen peroxide container. It was pretty much the same size for the V2. They both have more or less the same thrust and uh, about the same duration. So you need the same size of container. And that contained high pressure hydrogen peroxide. It was sent here for the V2 into the yellow containers. It was decomposed there by a catalyst. And then it fed the turbine, as I said earlier. And of course, the hydrogen peroxide container had to be pressurized from the yellow high pressure bottles all the way on this side here, on the right hand side. So they contain high pressure, about 3,000 psi uh, nitrogen. And uh, the uh, blue LOX lines also have to have horizontal pieces. They are made, are built from aluminum. And aluminum, as you probably know, contracts and expands quite a bit with the temperature. And this is very cool temperature. Of course, they want to contract. So they also have to be about half an inch shorter. And that's why you need some horizontal pieces in order to be able to take that expansion. For the redstone, you don't see all these complications with the pipes because you have only one pipe and for that one pipe you could then finally also introduce with better materials and expansion bellow. So an expansion bellow on the redstone engine takes care of this expansion which we also have on that engine. It also becomes about the same amount longer. And the other launch vehicles are of course the Jupiter here that I mentioned several times, which had for the first time this kind of engine. And you see that sticking out over there. NASA used a lot of Jupiters with so additional upper stages. This here is the data upper stage. And quite a number of uh, vehicles were launched by NASA. The olive one is of course military, redstone. And uh, redstone had a separated board and it is not a second stage. It does not have its own uh, 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 system, but it can be separated, and that way you can control your warhead with very great accuracy into your target. And you are also sure it comes in the right way. Many of the V2s, as you may have read, came down broadside, and then they, of course, finally broke up because they were not built to take that load, and so many of them did not hit the target for that reason. And to avoid it, that's why the redstone was redesigned with a separated warhead. And the warhead, of course, starts where you see the air vanes. And the air vanes can be controlled in order to have fine control into your target. And they also have some small, uh, again, high pressure nitrogen jets, which you see sticking out a little bit further up. And then, of course, the redstone was finally modified for the Explorer satellite launch. And you see that the white one there with US Army on it, that was still an army launch. So the army provided all these things. Uh, all at that time, no, that was before NASA. At least our group here had not joined NASA. So uh, that's why it was still an army version. And I mentioned earlier, there are three additional solid propellant upper stages on that version. And the same vehicle was also used to launch Alan Shepard. You see that launch vehicle here. And uh, you see also the escape tower there. And Alan Shepard, of course, could not go into a Earth orbit. That's why that had to be done later on by John Glenn using an Atlas. And the one lying on the side there, that's an Atlas launch vehicle. You see there are three engines sticking out of the tail end. The two outer engines are basically Jupiter engines with uh, small modifications. The central engine is quite a bit smaller. That's a sustainer engine and that pushes the Atlas either into its 5,000 mile ICBM range or into an Earth orbit, if you fly an Earth orbital mission. And the engine sitting there, standing up again, 